This is a super exciting clutch of ball python eggs that I have been waiting for for 57 days to actually cut. We're about to find out what's inside them. And this happens to be the female that laid this clutch. It's actually an Enchi Pastavi Het Clown Ball Python. So again, it's an Enchi, it's a pastel, it's a Mojave, and it's Het for Clown. And that's absolutely a beautiful animal that produced some really cool babies last year. And she was bred to the same male that we bred last year because we were so happy with the offspring, which actually is a banana clown ball python. Python. Because the clown is a recessive mutation, on average, half of the baby should be clown. And then there's all kinds of combination of banana, pastel, enchi, mojave, all kinds of different stuff like that. So I am definitely super excited to see what this clutch hatches. And I'm hoping when we cut this clutch, we get a couple zingers like we did last year. Like this is one of the holdbacks that we actually hung on to. It's just a banana, pastel, enchi, clown ball python that has a super reduced pattern to it. Absolutely incredible. And this one's actually in shed right now. When it's out of shed, this thing is on fire. And then this one was actually the all gene animal. This happens to be a banana, pastel, enchi, mojave, clown ball python. Absolutely incredible. I tell you what, this is going to be a powerhouse male for us next year when we're breeding some animals for sure. So uh, lesson, you know, I think we could get some pretty cool stuff. We've got five eggs. Last year she actually had seven eggs, uh, but the reason she had five eggs is a little bit of a story. And that story actually is she laid five eggs and then she egg bound with four other eggs. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is that she passed all four eggs on her own. I didn't have to assist her at all. And that just goes to show you that if you ever do have an egg bound animal, which hopefully you don't, a lot of times they will take care of it on their own, especially if those eggs are close to the anal vent, right? So basically what we don't want is the eggs to be mid body because if it's mid body, they probably need surgery. But in this case, I could tell that the eggs were right down by her vent. Don't know why she didn't lay them. The next day she laid one egg and over the next week, week and a half, she laid the other four eggs and now she's 100% back on food and doing incredible. So now that we've seen some of the babies from last year and we've seen the mom and dad, why don't you say we go ahead and cut this clutch and see what we actually get in there. And again, with only five eggs, you never know what's gonna end up happening, but there could be some bangers in here. I tell you, know, I, I always get nervous. I've cut so many hundreds, really thousands of clutches. And still, every time I have a clutch like this, I get nervous because you know, you could prove something that's really kind of like a het clown per se, which is still cool, but is it what we really want? All the way up to that all gene animal, which of course would be the pastel and cheap banana, Mojave, clown ball python. So let's go ahead, jump into egg number one and hope that the odds gods are on our favor. Let's do it. All right, first egg oftentimes sets the mood for the entire clutch. So let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, no clown, unfortunately, but, ooh, dog. Whoa, dog. That thing is gorgeous. I tell you what, that is beautiful I, I you know i'm assuming this is a pastel enchi mojave hat for clown but i'll be honest with you i've never seen any that had color like this that is a gorgeous snake so we did miss the clown but i tell you what i love that it might could it be a banana you know it's a banana too that's what's making that crazy color so so basically we hit all the jeans minus the clown in this one and i tell you what that is an absolute ripper and it's going to be a great animal because it's probably a male because the banana is a male maker that means that's going to be a male banana pastel enchi mojave head clown it's going to be a banger for someone that wants to produce some cool clown stuff in the future four eggs to go let's hit some clowns all right and again sometimes you don't hit everything and you can still produce something really spectacular so what is the second egg Egg here looks like we have definitely a clown and it looks like weirdly enough I think this is just a normal clown it's really a reduced clown almost looks like a bladeish type clown but I don't know that there's blade in this clown project or not but the blade clown basically just has just that stripe right down its back with hardly any patterning on the side and that's what we look like we have here but uh, unfortunately I don't know if it's blade so regardless definitely a beautiful clown uh, we haven't really hit a whole lot of odds when it comes to the clown and mutations, but we still have three eggs to go. And the more I think about it, why it's probably reduced like this is it's probably an Enchi clown ball python. Because that Enchi will reduce, yeah, and the more I look at it, absolutely it's an Enchi clown. When we see its head, that Enchi really messes with the head. Can't see it in the egg there, so I'm sure that's what it is. So, hey, we hit a pretty cool animal, Enchi clown. Uh, let's move on to egg number three. All right, come on, guys. I really love banana clown stuff, so I'm hoping we can get some banana clown mutations that are combos. Looks like we've got another banana that may or may not, looks like it might be a clown. 
Let's see, yep, we do. We got a clown here. So this is definitely a banana. Looks like a pastel. It's definitely a banana. Looks like a pastel. Definitely a clown. I'm not sure if there's Enchi in this one. So I think that we actually just produced a pastel banana clown ball python right now. Maybe there might be Mojave in there. When this one hatches out, nevertheless, really a beautiful snake too. And we've got two more to go. We've had some pretty cool stuff already, but we haven't hit that dream snake all gene that we hit last year with two eggs to go. Hey, we can still hit it, right? So let's go ahead and do it right in this egg right now. All right, come on. Come on, come on. Again, I tell you, it never gets old, the people. Just looking in these eggs and never knowing what you're gonna get. And, uh, oh, jeez, it looks like we got a banana, maybe a banana entry uh, that's het for clowns. So it's kind of a bummer. So we have hit two clowns out of four eggs, which is on average, right? So we have one egg that's gonna please be a clown at least and some combination thereof. What's interesting with this egg, take a look at this egg right here. It's actually fuzzy a little bit and that happens sometimes. It'll get a little bit of mold on it. That's nothing to really worry about. As long as the mold doesn't turn green, usually no big deal at all. That happens every now and then. So come on guys. Please give me something good. Let's hit it right here. Come on, you know I love ending egg cutting with a bang. You guys know that, so let's see what we got here. Ooh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Definitely a banana. Is it, ah! It is it again, so we didn't hit a clown on this one again. So this cluster is still really cool. We hit some really cool stuff, but we missed our kind of all gene animal. We didn't get any really banana Mojave clowns or, or banana Enchi clowns or any of that type of stuff. We didn't hit any of that. We still hit some good stuff. That's how it goes, guys. I'm not complaining because we still got two beautiful clowns and we got some cool head clown stuff. So hey, all in all, it's good. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And you know, do me a favor, when we're cutting eggs, go down below and you know, guess as I go so that way we can have fun together. Back in the bar check kitchen, which can only mean one thing. My friends over at HelloFresh are hooking me up. Today, uh, Santa Fe pork tacos. That's right, these look absolutely scrumptious. I've been working with HelloFresh for a long time. Been using HelloFresh for about two years. The thing that's great about HelloFresh is it's got more five-star recipes than any other meal kit out there. I love it because it makes me a great chef, just like you're gonna find out today. It cuts time out of my life. I don't have to think about anything. They just send me a bag, they send me the ingredients, and I actually cook them. I don't have to go to the grocery store. That could take like 40 plus minutes to go to the grocery store. I don't have that time. Not to mention you save 28% on average because there's less waste. There's less meal press, there's less waste. It's actually great, right? It tastes great. And if you want to get on a diet, there's low carb, there's vegetarian. There's all kinds of different options for you guys. Not to mention they have large box sizes now for you big families out there that need large boxes like uh, our family kind of needs that to be totally honest with you. And also they're really great about the environment. Their content comes in already recycled or ready to be recycled content, which is better for the environment, which is better for you guys. And at any time, you can kind of change your meal plan up, add proteins, add desserts, take away, skip a week, whatever you might do. It's absolutely incredible. Like I said, for a guy like me that's as busy as I am, I need help when it comes to the kitchen. It's gonna make me look like an absolute wizard in the kitchen. They always do, it always tastes great. I know sometimes between me and you, I don't even tell Lori it's hella fresh. I just say I came up with the recipes and uh, she's blown away by it. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into some cooking. HelloFresh's selection of tasty extras gets bigger and better every week, featuring quick breakfasts and lunches, additional protein, savory sides, and drew-worthy desserts. HelloFresh cuts the stress of meal planning out and prepping so you can enjoy cooking and getting dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. HelloFresh is committed to making fresh, delicious food available more now than ever and has taken extra steps to keep its employees and customers safe. HelloFresh donated over 4 million meals to charity in 2020 and has continued to step up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my promo code 12BrianB and get 12 meals including free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code 12 Brian B and get 12 meals including free shipping. And now my favorite part of this brand integration with HelloFresh, tasting it because it's always so good. Let's go. Mm, man, oh my God. Oh, wow, that's a banger. That only took me 20 minutes, people. Wow, guys, that is absolutely ridiculous. If I could do this, you guys can do it. Now you can get 12 free meals including free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code 12 Brian B. Tell what, you get 12 free meals plus free shipping. Meantime, guys, I'm just gonna keep eating. 
Hello and good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. By the way, remember when someone sent us that ivy rock? Well, that's now right down here for anyone that comes. We actually hide rocks around. People had rocks around. It's really cool. And speaking of Reptile Army, go to reptilearmy.com. You can get the Fear Me shirt. You can get whatever you possibly want. I mean, I love the Fear Me shirt. Definitely one of our best sellers. We've got like six or eight more designs going to be dropping here in the next few days. So go to reptilearmy.com. Join the movement. All right, guys. So we got my boy Tamale here, and we're going to do some uh, blue ball training with this guy. He loves the ball. He loves beef. Should go great. I like that ass, so there you go. Come in. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There you go. Get that down. Mmm. Tasty. Is that focus? Focus. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Savage. Let's go, Tamale. Yeah, come on. He's a little hesitant. Boom, there we go. We'll go ahead, we'll reward that. Come on. Boom. And that right there is exactly what we wanted. We wanted him out, eating, back in. So we're gonna go ahead and give him one last piece. So with Tamale, it's super awesome how ball motivated he is. It's really gonna open up the doors for doing amazing feedings with him. He isn't really the happiest guy being pet, but he does love this ball and he does, he does love to eat. So, honestly, it's going to go great. So, it, I absolutely love this little guy. This is one of our, what they call, Aki monitors. This is a little dwarf monitor from the northwest part of Australia. And they actually even can be on some of the islands right off the coast of Australia. And this is what they would call a red Aki monitor. There's actually three subspecies of Acanthurus. There are Varanus Acanthurus. That's where their name Aki monitor actually comes from. And a lot of people actually think that the red Ackies have a little bit longer tail and get a little bit larger than some of the other ones. But uh, the truth is, is that even a big Aki is maybe 17 to 20 inches. Males will typically get larger. Females are smaller. Some they call sexual dimorphism. So the females stay about, you know, maybe 14 to 15 inches. Males can sometimes reach up to 20, 22 inches, something like that. This guy's actually about three years old. The thing that's so amazing about it is again, I always talk about the fact that these guys are like little tiny Elvises, right? Like just like Elvis, you can train them, you can teach them, you can interact with them, you can have a relationship. Just just like we do with Elvis that's almost five and a half six foot but this little pint sized animal and there's a handful of dwarf monitors from Australia Aki's being the most common of them and the most readily available so the fact is if you want the monitor lizard and you think my gosh I would love to have Elvis but there's just no way I can have an eight or ten foot cage or something like that this is absolutely a doable animal again you want a pretty big hot spot because these guys do come from the area that's going to get maybe 115 120 degrees during the daytime and they are a diurnal animal meaning that they are out in the daytime and then they sleep during the nighttime so they're baking in the sun so you want that really big hot spot but then you want a cool spot because they will go into caves to get away from things you want that to be about 80 82 degrees maybe 84 degrees at the most part they definitely eat mainly insects and we sometimes give them little pieces of meat but mainly an insectivore absolutely one for me just take a look at how cute that little animal is it's just so awesome to think that this is an adult here it's not going to get any larger and I can still play with it the same way that I would play with Elvis without having the huge claws and all the other stuff so I tell you what I love little Aki monitors definitely an awesome animal if you want to monitor but you don't have the size for a giant one what is Matilda doing you guys know that we actually let the tortoises come out whenever they want they just push their way out and walk around this morning came in and Matilda's been out all day she's just been walking around just kind of enjoying herself she is absolutely amazing and I love the fact that they have the freedom I and mean, they can stay in their enclosure if they want to and they can push the way out if they want to she's just on a little walkabout today so she's absolutely beautiful she's looking at some sunrise right now probably like can I eat you uh, absolutely wonderful animal but I love that they get the freedom like that I wish all the animals could just be set free and just roam around but uh, Matilda definitely an absolute wonderful animal all right Jay you ready yes you ready to see yeah I'm never taking a vacation again oh that's perfect here. oh is this real life that's real that's what, that's what it looked like so the reptarium's down here right now and that's the top side oh my god when does it start? Uh, next week. No, I don't know. We're working on it. Actually, I'm going to go talk to a guy right now, a construction guy. So, uh, oh my slow God. Down. Yeah. <laughs> this is beautiful. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it's going to be great. You guys ready to play the egg game? That's right. We actually have a VPI Azanthic around some eggs. And here she is. And again, the Azanthic, and this happens to be a VPI Azanthic, which is Vita Percota International Strain. And basically, there's like three different types of Azanthics. They aren't compatible with one another. So if you breed a snake keeper or what they call the Sutherland Azanthics to the VPI, you'll actually get normal babies. So you definitely don't want to do that. Most people do keep the VPI, but they all really are beautiful. And they're just lacking the yellow pigment, which is called Xanthophore. And it's pretty cool because it's bred to this drag dragonfly 
Het Exantic VPI. So basically, it's a pastel, it's a fire, it's a pinstripe, and it's Het for VPI. So down in the comments, what will I potentially produce from a VPI female to a dragonfly Het VPI? Remembering, it's a recessive mutation. So let's go ahead and see what this girl has. I see a slug or two in here, which is not something I was hoping for. Ah, yeah, there's a few different slugs in here, but there's also some good eggs. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Now that male actually only fathered one clutch so far this year, and it was all fertile. I think there was one slug in that clutch. So it's a little bit of a disappointment that this girl that typically lays a really good clutch would actually have some slugs. But hey, that's all part of the deal. We have four slugs in here right now. We'll go ahead and get mama back, get her all cleaned up, and then we'll count the eggs. We've got two, four, six good eggs, four slug eggs. So that would have been a 10 egg clutch. But hey, we still have six eggs. Down in the comments, let me know what you think we're gonna hatch. We actually have a couple more ball python clutches, but we're gonna go ahead and pull those over on Patreon. Link is in the description. We're just trying to pull a handful of clutches here and there for this vlog so we don't bore you guys that much. The rest of the people that want to watch all of our egg pulling, you can check it out over on Patreon. Another cool species of Australia. Australia has all the cool animals, don't they? I mean, they have so many cool things. But of course, are the blue tongue skinks. Now, this happens to be Irwin, which is a northern blue tongue skink. And there's a bunch of different subspecies of what they would call Telinqua skinkoides. This one is really known as Telinqua skinkoides intermedia, although there are some people now that are calling them skinkoides, skinkoides as well. I'm not exactly sure how that classification is working, but basically this is just a little bit more northern animal on the east side of Australia. So you're going to find these animals all throughout mainly Queensland, maybe the very tip of the north part of New South Wales. Then when you get down into the New South Wales, like the Sydney area, you get eastern, which are definitely the skinkoides, skinkoides. And then of course there's some other species like potato and stuff like that that I'll show you in a second. But nevertheless, I love the Australian skinks. I think they're absolutely amazing. And the northerns are the ones that are the most common here in America. You definitely see them because you can't import them out of Australia anymore and you can't even import them out of Europe anymore. So no imports come into the country except for the ones out of Indonesia which are actually Telinqua gigas. So they're not skinkoides. So no skinkoides can be imported into the country. So whatever we have here is what we have here and most of them are actually northern. And then like I mentioned, we actually have Potato. He is actually a Centralian blue tongue skink. So these guys come from the red center of Australia, the Alice Springs area, all the way down into the Ula and so on like that. These guys are definitely a lot less common here in the country. There's just a handful of these guys. And again, these are actually a Telinqua skinkoides multifaciata. And again, I absolutely love them. I mean, it's probably the Westerns and the Centralians are my favorite of all the blue tongue skinks. And actually I have a friend down in Florida that might have some baby Westerns this year. And if he does, I definitely have to get those guys because then I'll have kind of all of them. I'll have the Easterns, I'll have the Westerns, I'll have the Centralians, and of course I'll have the Northerns. Now there are blotch skinks and of course bobtail skinks which are the shinglebacks, but uh, it would be cool to have all of them at the zoo. I'll be totally honest with you, but potato is pretty darn awesome. You guys know I read your comments, so there's someone has been dropping comments for the last week or so saying, if you get an Everglades rat snake clutch, please show it. So guess what? This is for you. It's actually for everybody, but this is actually what they would call a white-sided Everglades rat snake. They used to call them ghost Everglades rat snakes. Don't bite. Ow, you bit me. I knew you were going to bite me. I knew you were going to bite me. Yeah, that's, that's what Everglades do, that's for sure, especially when they have eggs. So we'll go ahead and get this egg box out of here. I'll tell you, Mama is upset. Look at her. Whoa! Come on, girl. You're okay. Get back in there. Get back in there. <laughs> Jeez, your piece. We'll get her all cleaned up. What a pistol, huh? So again, the way Everglades rat snakes typically lay eggs is they'll lay them in all over the place, but they're kind of buried kind of in the sphagnum, which is kind of cool. It's uh, So when you find them, it's almost like a little Easter egg hunt, right? So we have no idea how many eggs are in here. We just keep on, it's, it's literally like treasure hunt in here. We do have one little slugger right here. The rest of the eggs actually look pretty good. So hopefully all of the eggs will be good and uh, we'll get them all out of here. Slowly but surely, see how many eggs she has. And again, this is a white-sided, which is a recessive mutation, and it's actually just bred to a normal Everglades that's het for white-sided, so about half the eggs will actually be white-sided, half the eggs will be normal. A couple more slugs, definitely not uh, the clutch that I wanted from this girl, but never, oh, here's some more good eggs right here. These are nice. So yeah, it's not a bad clutch, you know, a couple slugs and stuff like that, but for the most part, mainly good eggs. We'll make sure we've got all the eggs out. Yep, we sure do. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 eggs. So there you have it. For the person that wanted Everglades Clutch, you've seen it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog and the egg cutting. Some pretty cool babies, no doubt about it. If you did enjoy it, here's a playlist of egg cutting galore. If you want to check out a couple of those videos on this side, could you do me a favor and subscribe to this vlog channel? Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.